So, as uh, we chat here with Tom Westerholm, Evan Valenti, I'm Adam Kaufman. I think uh, you all know that by now. There, if I were to rank the draft Knicks, the pundits, you know, among us when it comes to uh, prospects, Tom, you're right there at the top, and then uh, you know, Evan, right after you, and I am. I am a distant third at the bottom of the list. I, I don't know a lot about these two other than obviously what I've taken the time to watch and to read since the Celtics drafted them. And I, you know, knew going into the draft, I, I could tell you as much as these two are uh, acclaimed shooters. Neesmith obviously regarded as the best shooter in the draft. I think the Celtics did well to get who they got at the spots that they were. There were a lot of rumors about trading up, many of which I didn't really buy into, especially the people that were talking about Marcus Smart going to Golden State for the number two pick or the C's trying to trade into the top three or, or package up for the top six and then move that pick, part of a Drew Holiday thing, yada, yada, yada. That stuff, it never really felt real to me. So the Celtics... All due respect to Yamadar, we're not talking about him right now. Celtics got at two guys that should be on Boston's roster. Maybe Pritchard spends a little time in Maine, but these guys really should both be on Boston's roster this year. And they appear to have that kind of, you know, microwave instant buckets off the bench shooting that the Celtics have longed for basically since the Eddie House days. But I can't say that without saying this. So did Carson Edwards, and it didn't pan out, at least not yet. So what do you expect from these guys right here? What can you tell us? Well, I mean, the, the thing with Carson is that he was always a streaky shooter in college. And, and I think the thing that people kind of latched onto, and, and understandably, because it's what everybody watched, but I mean, he was great in the tournament. Um, mm -hmm. But like that season, he shot like 36% from three. You know, he wasn't um, like super, super consistent. Um, Neesmith, you know, there's a small, like kind of, I don't want to call them red flags. There's small things to watch out for, like, his shooting percentage looks amazing because he shot 52% from three his sophomore season. But it's worth remembering that that was in 14 games. So it was a relatively small sample size, even though he shot about eight threes a game. And his competition was real mediocre. Um, he did not hit his team's uh, best games um, before he was sidelined with an injury for the rest of the year. So there is that to keep in mind. That said, he, he's a knockdown shooter. I mean, he, he's really, really good. He's got great footwork off the ball. Um, you know, like I, I saw a bunch of comparisons to JJ Redick. I think that's, you know, probably a, we'll see if he shoots as well as Redick, but I think that's a type of player, you know, kind of an archetype that he can follow offensively. Um, I, I think he's, I think he's a good player. Uh, I think he's going to be able to contribute, um, you know, as somebody who uh, in, in a lot of my men's leagues, I, I average, you know, somewhere between 15 to 20 points a game that are all on three pointers that are all catch and shoot. Uh, I, I respect his game immensely. Um, and and I, I like, I like his defensive potential. I don't think he's going to be some like, you know, Tony Allen guy, but I, I do think that, you know, he's strong, he's long, um, you know, six, six, with I think a six ten wingspan, there's a lot to like there. And I think that especially within like a Brad Stevens defense, you know, there's like a very good chance that he comes out as a, a plus defender of some kind. So, you know, I don't think the Celtics drafted like, like, you know, some former superstar, some franchise building block or anything, but I think they picked up a guy who's going to be able to help them quite a bit and has, you know, some nice NBA upside. Yeah. I, uh, I, I went in like after the, we were done with the draft. I, I remember thinking, I like the Pritchard pick quite a bit, and I wasn't as high on the Neesmith pick. Um, and then the next day, I did a little more deep dive, and I flipped my my response. I think the Neesmith <laughs> pick was a real was a real solid pick. Um, the, the 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 small sample size thing, I told, I think people, I, I I hear you, I get it. But when you're shooting eight threes a game and hitting half of them, I don't care how many freaking games you play. Like that's yeah. it's pretty impressive. Fourteen, and it's not like fourteen games isn't a big sample size. It's a decent chunk of games. Um, his form was is fantastic. Um, and I, I actually really enjoyed some of the things that Jerry Stackhouse, his coach of Vanderbilt said about him. Um, he, he talked about how he kind of reminds him of Allen Houston. And so I was like, Hmm, that's interesting. I like that. So go back and watch some Allen Houston tape. And, you know, I know it's tough because it's nineties basketball and it's like the fourth quarter and it's 68, 62. It's just like, <laughs> this, is, this is a tough watch right now. But the one thing I do like about Allen Houston, he's a really excellent either catch and shoot guy or a really proficient one dribble or two dribble pull up guy, which is exactly what Neesmith kind of is. Don't ask Neesmith to do a lot of creation for you. He's not going to be able to do that. Um, you know, you could, you could cite his role is just, you know, it's just not that. And especially against the teams that he was playing against. In fact, he didn't show it against like the, some of the, I've never even heard of some of the teams they played last year. I've, I, there, there were games and I'd be like, I've never been, what does that even stand for? I don't know what the, <laughs> the acronym stands for. So, um, 
I, he's not going to be a f- big facilitator guy. It's going to be something maybe that he develops along the way, but he's going to be able to come in and shoot the hell out of the basketball. I mean, he really is. And what's great is he knows how to lo- relocate, you know, off of, you know, yeah. uh, some sort of, you know, he'll dish it out and then find a way to get the ball back and, 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 and can open shots. Um, he's great, you know, coming off of screens, DHOs. I mean, you're going to see a lot of dribble handoffs uh, next year, I think. Um and I, and I, I'll be honest. The defensive stuff is what got me, I think, the most excited, though, because if you can defend a little bit on this team, you're going to get, you're going to see the floor. I mean, it's really how you know Smart sees the floor. Go back to early Jalen Brown when Jalen was playing well defensively, he saw the floor. When he wasn't, he never saw the floor. Um, and they need a, a guy to step in at the wing to defend after Hayward leaves. I mean, they desperately need it. So uh, that six ten wingspan is going to be big. He's a grown adult. Uh, his diet is amazing. I don't know if anybody saw the video of him cooking in the in the in the kitchen. He was making French toast, but he's like, "Yeah, every day for lunch, I have a salad with walnuts. I got spinach salad with walnuts in it." And I'm like, "I had a pizza. Like, what is this? This is crazy." <laughs> so uh, he seems like a full adult. He he, you know, looks like the Chris Middleton, which I think is maybe his best outcome there. Um, both from Charleston, South Carolina, which is really cool. I, I'm a big fan. I think he's definitely a threat to be a big impact of a player. And why I thought at the time was, this was a shit, we missed out on Tyler Hero, we can't do that again, pick. That's what it felt like to me. I mean, it really, it's, you think, you know, what would this season have done with Tyler Hero who went one pick before them, and he, like, talked about how he thought he was going there anyway. This felt like we can't let this ca- this caliber of a shooter get by us again. We just can't do it. And, again, there were intriguing options in front of them that I'm sure people were like, trade up for Halliburton or whatever. I get that, and that would have been cool too. Hassel. Uh, yeah, Vassell is another guy Vassell, who can yeah. really shoot the crap out of the ball. Huge wingspan. I mean, goes on for days. Um, but Neesmith is a real solid pick. I mean, really solid. He knows what he's good at. Uh, and I think there's some serious growth for a couple of things. But, I mean, he's going to be a guy roll the ball out. He should be able to play right away. 